Amanza! Amanza! Viva the economic freedom fighters! Viva! Viva! Pansy Inoko Dowane Pansy! For the first time since 1994, the biggest expenditure item on the budget of South Africa is to pay debts. It's debt service cost at more than 310 billion rand. So the amount of money which government is going to spend in the current financial year is more than the entire money that is spent on education. The amount of money that is going to be spent on debt services is more than the money that is spent on health care. It's more than the money that is spent on the police. It's more than the money that is spent on the army. Just to service the interests of the loans that the South African government has taken and continues to take from the local banks and financial institutions, but also from the global institutions, which includes the World Bank and the IMF. So our march is correct today that history must never say that we did not do anything as the EFF. History must never say that we folded our arms when government was drowning itself into huge debts. The debt to GDP ratio now is going to be above 80%, meaning that South Africa is currently owing more than 4.3 trillion rands. And they are saying that over the next two years, the debt is going to be more than 5.5 trillion rands. That is what Ino Kotogwan was saying there. But there is no solution that he has provided. Because the most dependable and clear solution to deal with debt is to grow the productive forces is to grow the economy, is to industrialize, is to do what we say in the founding manifesto of the EFF, must be massive industrial protected expansion. Ino Kotongwani never said anything about industrialization today then. He never said anything about using the procurement power of the state of government to localize the economy. Government is the biggest buyer of almost everything. Government is the single biggest buyer of food for school feeding schemes, for hospitals, for prisons. Imagine what would happen in the agricultural sector if government can take a resolution that all the food that is bought by the state and the food implements including the forks, the knives, the spoons, the plates, all of them must be made here in South Africa. That is going to create a lot of jobs for our people. Yes. Government is the biggest buyer of even tax time. For the bedding in hospitals, for the uniform of nurses, for the uniform of police, for the uniform of soldiers, if we pass a policy here in South Africa that all the tax time that is bought by the state, all the clothes that are bought by the state, including prison uniforms, must be made here in South Africa. That is going to create a lot of jobs. <laughs> Government is the biggest buyer of cars. In the government garage, when you count, including these police vans, the cars that are owned by municipalities, the cars that are owned by provincial government, the cars that are given to these ministers and MECs, it's more than 500,000 cars that are under ownership of the state. But none of those cars are made in South Africa. They are just assembled here in South Africa. South Africa is not maximizing its capacity to manufacture our own cars. 
And the reason why we stand opposed to the World Bank and the IMF is because when they borrow you money, they're going to say to you, you must engage in something called trade liberalization, which means that you are not allowed, you are not permitted to protect your own industries. You are not allowed to manufacture your own goods and services. You are not allowed to manufacture your own cars. You are not allowed to manufacture your own electronics. We can give so many examples of what government purchases every day. But the World Bank with the loans that they are giving, they will say, your policies must not protect any industry. You must be open so that the West must come and dump finished goods and products into your market. That is why we stand opposed to these people. But also, once we are unable to pay back the money, as South Africa, that we have taken from the World Bank, the IMF, and other institutions, we are going to fall into a debt trap where it is permanently impossible to ever service that particular debt. And when you have got the permanent incapacity to service the debt, the IMF is going to take over your country. It's going to literally take over the economic policy decisions. It's going to undermine your sovereignty. It's going to undermine your independence. It will not matter what you say, what you do. It will not matter what workers say and what workers demand. If the IMF and the World Bank says you must reduce salaries of public servants, you will be forced to do so. If they say you must stop giving free food in poor schools, you will be forced to do so. If they say you must cut on free electricity, you will be forced to do so. If they say you must cut on free water, you will be forced to do so. That is why we come here to register a point and say to National Treasury that let us stop the loans from the IMF and the World Bank. We have seen how many countries in the African continent have drowned themselves into debts and into structural adjustment programs imposed by the World Bank and the IMF. They call it something now, but what South Africa is doing is exactly what many African countries have done. These days they say it's structural reform. They say it's an economic recovery plan. There is no difference between the structural adjustment programs and these structural reforms which are imposed by the rich nations of the world that are represented in the OECD. There is absolutely no difference. That is why already they have started to privatize ESCOM. They come to parliament and say ESCOM will not be privatized. But the privatization of energy generation is to privatize ESCOM. Last week here in Cape Town, the mayor here was saying that they're going to issue out a tender for independent power producers to produce energy on behalf of the people of Cape Town. And you know what will happen when energy and electricity are produced by private companies. Poor people will not gain access to electricity. These are the policies of Ramaphosa. These are the policies of a puppet of imperialism. Because what Ramaphosa is, is just a puppet of imperialist control. He is not a human being. He is just a puppet who is told what to do 
by domestic and global capitalist interests. That is why fighters outside of us protesting, we must go on the ground and build a strong economic freedom fighters. It is our obligation that all of us must go and build strong and dependable branches of the EFF. That is why we say the year 2022 is the year of the branch. The problem that we have been having before in the EFF is that when we reach 100 members, we stop recruitment. This year we are not stopping. Every Friday we go and recruit as many members as possible. If you have got 2,000 members, it is okay. <coughs> if it goes to 5,000 members, it is okay. We must not limit ourselves to 100 members. <coughs> because we will not be able to stop the ANC, to stop the World Bank, to stop the IMF, if we do not have numbers on the ground. We need activists of the EFF on the ground. We need a minimum of one million ground forces by the end of December. <laughs> we need ground forces who will be understanding what is expected from them. We need ground forces that will understand the seven cardinal pillars in the struggle for economic freedom. All of us have an obligation as fighters to understand and internalize what we stand for. Everything else that we do is inspired by the founding manifesto of the EFF. The reason we are here today is because we know that our cardinal pillar on massive industrialization is going to be undermined if we continue to take the loans from the IMF and World Bank. We are not just gathering without a clear political agenda. We are here to defend our interest, but also we are here to defend the future. Why do we defend the future? It's because we know that the future belongs to the EFF. We know that in the immediate future, we are going to inherit this government. We are going to be given the electoral majority to run the government of South Africa. We do not want to run a government that is owing 10 trillion rands. We do not want to run a government that is controlled by the World Bank and the IMF. We want to run an autonomous government that can take its own decisions. But what these ones are doing now is taking us towards a dangerous mood where we're going to lose our sovereignty, where we're going to lose our independence. That is why we must stop it now. And this must be escalated. <coughs> this protest must not just end here. Everywhere we must illustrate that what Ramaphosa is doing is not on behalf of majority of South Africans. There is a scientific proof now that the ANC does not enjoy the support of the majority of the people of South Africa. The ANC support has gone below 50%. So we cannot allow a party that is less than 50% to go and take loans on our behalf. And not just loans, but loans from dangerous institutions. We must stand firm, we must stand resolute, and always intensify the struggle. Fighters, our task is very simple. Each and every Friday, as a member of the EFF, you must know that you are betraying the revolution if you have not recruited at least five people each and every Friday. And don't just recruit within the EFF. Go to people that you do not know. Let's reproduce ourselves. 
Let's tell the people that this organization is the only weapon in the hands of the defenseless masses of our people. There is no any other weapon that can fight and protect our people from imperialism other than the EFF. The, the ANC is a puppet of the white capitalist class. The DA is not even ashamed about it. That is why they were celebrating each other when Ramaphosa gave the sauna and said the government does not create jobs, business does. And the DA was celebrating that and the Freedom Front Plus was celebrating that because they know that business in South Africa is white people. So they were celebrating the fact that Ramaphosa has reinstated us back to power. The reason why all of us as black people we refer to employers even when they are black as umlungu is because business and employers in South Africa has been white people. What Ramaphosa was saying in Sona was to say let us allow white people to employ black people. We can't do anything as the state. But when white people were in poverty, they created state-owned companies to take white people out of poverty. Transnet, ESCOM, ESCO, they even owned game reserves so that they can employ their people to take them out of poverty. But we have got a nonsensical government here of a puppet of imperialism, of a puppet of white monopoly capital that says that government cannot create jobs. You cannot and we must never ever believe in that. <coughs> if they believe in that, they must let go of government. We must then take over as the EFF to drive massive industrialization to create millions of jobs. We must take over to take the land and give to our people. We must take over to introduce free, free quality education for all. We must take over to meaningfully fight against corruption. We must take over to build state capacity. Instead of selling off the already existing state companies, we must be creating more and more state-owned companies. We must be having a state-owned company that builds bridges, that builds houses for our people. We must have a state-owned cement company. We must have state-owned companies in all sectors because that is how we're going to defeat poverty but also grow the economy and not find ourselves in this debt. Thank you very much, fighters, for coming in your numbers. Your message has been very clear. We can tell you now that this is not meaningless. Our presence here is appreciated. Let's intensify and do work on the ground. Amanda! Away to! Viva EFF, viva! viva. Pansy World Bank, Pansy! Pansy IMF, Pansy! Forward to socialism, forward! Amanda! Away to! And thank you very much. The SG is going to sing for you.